In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today in the Gospel, we see people searching for food, searching to survive, serving, searching like we're searching to take care of our families, take care of our situations, make sure there's food on the table. What they were searching for today in the Gospel of John, John chapter 6, is the same thing we search for. <clears throat> and here, the Lord was saying, you're looking for food, you're looking for bread. But then our Lord Jesus said something else. He said, you should be looking for so much more. He said, you should be looking for me. I am the bread of life. And we might change that in our context to be, I am the Shema of life. I am the Injere of life. I am the bread of life. <clears throat> he wants more. He wants us not just to look for the food, for the materials, for the money. He wants more. He wants to give us so much more. And today, I think there's things stopping us. And some of you said, I'm coming to church, Abuna, I read the Bible, I pray. What more do, should I do? Isn't that true? He said, what more should I do to... Yeah, I'm taking care of my family and I'm coming to church. I'm here today. What more do you want from me, Father? And I think that's what I want to say today to us. <laughs> I remember when I was younger, I was afraid to come to church. Me and my brother used to come to the church and stay by the door. And the church door was always closed, but there was like a window. And we would always look in, me and my brother, we would come just for a few minutes, we would look in the window, we would see everyone in the church praying, and then we would leave. I was always afraid to come. I was always afraid, I felt ashamed of my life. I couldn't come in to the church to be with God and one day I finally made it in through the doors and I would stay in the back of the church like some of you like to do to stay in the back of the church kind of hiding in the corners I did that for many years also but after some time I wanted to go further closer I wanted to know more I wanted to know about the bread of life I wanted to come to him truly and I want also all of you to be the same today I know when we make a mistake in our life, our sin, something not honorable to God, we're afraid to come to Him. We're afraid to come near. And uh, today, the Lord gives us the best verse. I want you to help me memorize. Let's memorize this one together because this verse is something that really touches me and I want us to open our Bibles to John chapter 6, verse 37. And I want you to know that this is the verse is how God feels. John 6, 37. You may not feel like coming closer to God. You may be worried to draw near to Him. You may feel shame or guilty of a mistake or sin that you have made. That's why we kind of sit in the back. That's kind of why we don't even come to church. That's why we don't come to Him. And in John chapter 6, verse 37, 
the second part says the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out can we say that together the one who comes to me I by no means will cast out again the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out one more time no matter how you feel he's saying come to me I will never reject you I will never cast you out I will never judge you no matter how you feel about what you've done or what I've done he says come to me and the song that they sing today who remembers the song <clears throat> come to the table this is the table the Lord says all are welcome all of us are welcome to his table all of us are welcome to come to him he's the bread the shima of life he wants us to come to him no matter how we feel no matter what we've done never feel guilty to the point where you can't approach God never feel shame that you can't talk to him or walk to him or even take holy communion if you're baptized don't feel that the Lord says to me let's say one more time the one who comes <clears throat> the song begins we all start on the outside the outside looking in I'm telling you that song really touches me because I remember being on the outside like I said to you I, I remember not feeling welcomed in the church I, I remember not feeling loved by anyone in the church or accepted because I felt like they were staring at me for my mistakes we all start on the outside the outside looking in but then the next part of the song is even better it says this is where grace begins everyone who's coming to church today no matter how you feel no matter what's happening in your life no matter what's broken no matter what's bothering you it's time to come in it's time to draw near the bread of life is waiting it's time to come to the table it's time to come to the table from a different view there's so much forgiveness in this church today from God he's ready to forgive all of us <clears throat> I don't care what people say about us I don't care what we say about each other it doesn't matter the Lord himself anyone who comes to me I will by no means cast out come to me come to the table today and you're gonna see grace and forgiveness and love from the Savior today so whoever's coming into the church today it's a good day to come in with all his love and all his forgiveness no matter what you feel no matter what shame or what problem there's so much grace so much forgiveness waiting on this table for us Yes, so I 
Guess who Jesus is inviting to the church today? The liars. The sinners. The people who are angry. He says, welcome. People who have lust, impurities. Right? He says, come on in. Come on in. People who drank last night, maybe got drunk last night. Come on in. This is your place. Come on in. And you're probably thinking, how? Prostitutes, come on in. Everyone, come on in. Anything you've done, come on in. Come to the table. Come to me. I'll never cast you out. I'll never. Maybe we do that to each other. Maybe we hurt each other, but not him. Not him. He says, come. All of you here today, you came to the right place. It's a place of healing, place of restoration, place of forgiveness. And in the song, it says, liars, come. Doubters, if you have doubt, come. If you're even used to be in prison, come. If you're afraid, come. If you're hungry and thirsty, come. Oh, whatever you've done, today you'll come and sit down, take your place beside the Savior. We're all coming here to sit beside the Savior. He's saying, come to the table. Anyone who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. <clears throat> What is the table? This is the table. Altar table. Come to the table. Now let me ask you a question. What's the importance of this table? What's the big deal about this table? Does anybody know why this table is important? Who is residing on this table? Who is, who is on this table? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know what else is on this table? Is all the prayers that you've ever said in this church for all the years you've been coming to this church is on this table. All your repentance, all your... anything that you've confessed, anything that you prayed for, the sick or the broken, all those prayers are collected in the church. That's why the priest goes around with the censer. We collect all those prayers and we take them onto the table. And on this table, by the way, is where I take all my problems. This is where I take all my struggles. This is where I take my sin. I take it to this table. And our Lord Jesus Christ says, I will by no means cast you out. I forgive you. I love you. It's over. Continue. So whatever you've done over all the years, whatever you're going to pray today is going to be on this table. And at the end of the service, you're going to receive our Lord Jesus Christ on this table. I'm telling you, for all these years, we've been missing out on healing, forgiveness. God says, I will by no means cast out. Come to me today. Let's say it together, the one, all together, the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. Again, but say it this time with knowing that you're the one. Okay? The one who comes to me. Let's come to him today. I heard a story of a school, and the school was, was a school of all 
the worst kind of behaving students. And actually teachers would quit from the school because they couldn't handle the students. The students were so bad that the teachers every week were quitting. They said, we can't take these kids. It's too hard. One day a new teacher came to the school. He was young. He had some new ideas. He said, let me try something different with these children. Let me let them make the rules. So the teacher stood up and says, kids, you're going to make the rules today. All the kids were shocked. What do you mean we're going to make the rules? Yeah, you make the rules. But here's the thing. You make the rules and you make the punishment. So they made 10 rules and the punishment, if you break the rule, you get whipped 10 times. Okay, you got, the, you got it so far? These students made a rule. They made 10 rules. And if anyone breaks the rule, they get whipped t 10 times. The teacher wasn't sure, but that was their rule. He was trying to change them because these children were really misbehaved. Anyways, one day, one of the big guys of the classroom came. The big naughty ones. The, one of the most naughty kids. He came to the... He was shouting. He said, Who stole my lunch? And he was screaming and shouting. His name is Big Tom. Big guy. There was a little guy named Little Jim. Little Jimmy. Everyone pointed. Little Jimmy did it. And Little Jimmy had to come up to the front of the class and he had to be whipped ten times. Now, before little Jimmy, they said, take off your coat. And then the teacher was going to whip him ten times. It's a true story, by the way. And little Jimmy says, I don't want to take off my jacket. I don't want to take off my coat. He said, no, you have to take off your coat. He took off his coat, and he realized he wasn't wearing any clothes, any shirt. He had no shirt. And he told the teacher, sorry, I only have one shirt, and I, my mom is washing it right now. And then Big Tom, who was in the back, felt bad. So he came to the front and said, let me take the whippings for Jimmy. So Big Tom took the whippings until the, the rod broke. And everyone started crying in the school because why would Big Tom take the whipping for little Jimmy? They discovered later little Jimmy was actually very poor. He didn't have food, that's why he stole Big Tom's lunch. But Big Tom said, let me take it for you. Let me take it for you. And he took the whippings. And at the end, everyone was crying, saying, we're going to change ourselves. And why am I telling you this story today? Because when I'm telling you, come to the table, when I'm saying, come to the... And, and our Lord will never forsake us, He's saying, come, because He paid a big price for us already. He was punished, He was whipped so he can forgive us. Now, if we come to church every week and we're never repenting, we come to every week and we feel guilty and shame, then what he did on the cross is a waste of time. What he did on the cross was for forgiveness. Remember what he said on the cross? He said, forgive them. And that's what we need to figure out today is how to come to his table and to tell God, I am a liar. I am drinking, Lord, too much. I am cheating at work. I'm cheating against my husband or wife. I'm insulting too much. I'm fighting too much. I am lustful too much. I am misbehaving. I'm disobedient too much. I'm coming to you, Lord, today. And guess what he says? Welcome. You're the right kind of person I want. You're the person I've been looking for. Welcome. The one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. Welcome. There's a lot of forgiveness. He took the beating many years ago for this moment today. This moment today is because of 2,000 years ago, but don't... Here's the thing. Don't waste this moment. Don't waste this moment when God wants to forgive us. Don't waste this moment when you feel shame and guilty about your sin. And we try to cover it up. Don't cover it up anymore. And if you're in the church today saying, I don't know what my sin is, you better discover it quickly and give it to Him and say, God, I'm sorry. And he'll say, what? You're forgiven. Come to the table. The one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. Let's come to him today. All are welcome. Amen.
nina mama boza kapena nina mama boza kuli mamuna wanga kapena nina mina mamukazi wanga kimiuze yesu krisu yesu ni mwukonze kakukuru kila machima mkipe atipasa chisando kapena kukuru ina wana siwa nani kumbela kukuja asukuru ina maticha wansa wanani kuchawa kwa ita asukuru chukwa tiwana siwa nani kumbela kuma kunari mundo mwuze anakuela uja wa sopano analeta maramuro ya sopano Zeni ya jamalamu na yeso pano ya nari kisa wani kupanisha wina wacha mina zapanga machimo Zeni kuli wina wache anapanga machimo kapena kamwana kamono Kuma wina wachikuli ile anakamba atlekeni mtenge machimo haya Mumenye ile chukwa chandani cha uyu mwana Kati mchimozi mwazi na yeso kristu anasita wani anatitenge na machimo ya choo Yesu Kristu afuno tikuru kila machimo yake. So tufuniko kwela katepu ulo kuhu za kine nino ochi ima tufuniko menyewa kuma Yesu Kristu aza tikuru kila machimo yake. Chenti kwele si machimo yake katepu ulo. Kapena ni namizi la boza, kapena ni mana mama boza, kapena ni mame ya andu, kapena zosu za meni ni machita machimo yake. Chenti kwele ni Yesu Kristu atikuru kila machimo yake. Yesu Kristu afuko kala pamozi na kini. Akaba ume Yohan chapter 6. Verse 37, Aki iyo wansi wa mine wa zapu ya leo. Yesu sasa wa tayanira. Yesu sasa wa siya iya. Awa funi sisa wa kari kwa mwuzi na ewe. We started the message today when Jesus said, I am the Shema of life. Look everyone. God wants to give us life. Not death. Not sadness. Not brokenness. But can I tell you one of the challenges we're going to face today? God is forgiving us, but we don't forgive ourselves. Does that make sense? Listen to what I'm saying. God's forgiven us, but the problem is we don't forgive ourselves for what we've done. And that's the problem. One of the things I want you to take away the rest of liturgy is this. I want you to accept the forgiveness of God. What I mean by that is, if He's saying, I will by no means cast you out. If you come to me, I will, I will forgive you. The last piece is we must forgive ourselves. Okay? If we can't forgive ourselves, we made ourselves bigger than God. We're not bigger than God. God is bigger than us. So whatever you've done, and by the way, we've all done something, including me. We all do something that we just don't change, right? But there's the bread of life on the table today. He says, come to the table. He says, I will help you through it. But the only thing we need to do is come to Him and then accept His forgiveness. Does that make sense? We need to come to Him to say, God, I'm yours. I'm sorry. Here, work on this. Help me in this. And when you come to Him, He will forgive. And guess what? When we leave the church today, guess how we are? We're refreshed. We're restored. I don't want you to leave church today down. I want you to leave to church today up. Your head up, full of joy, full of love, full of compassion, full of the forgiveness that God has given us and walk out with joy. And no matter what people say to you, you still walk out with joy. People can judge us. People can talk about us. But I don't care about the people right now. I care about what God says. And God says, come to me and I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to give you new life. The bread of life is on the altar today. Don't waste this moment. These moments won't come forever. Don't think we're going to live forever. These moments in the church on Sunday are precious. These moments in the church on Sunday are very few. Maybe you come 30, 40 times a year on Sunday. That's not that many. That's not that many. I don't want to waste this one. Come to the table today different. Come ready to pour out and admit everything that's hurting you. And God says, I forgive you. And when you walk out of church today, you walk out full of life. And whenever someone says something to you, Say, thank you, and keep going. I don't care if they insult you. Say, hey, thank you for that insult, and keep going. Because you know you received forgiveness. You received life on the altar today. Let's pray for that. The one, let's say it together. The one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out again. The one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. Jesus says, I will never cast you out. I'm going to forgive whatever you've done. And those who are baptized today, come take communion. Don't say, no, no, I haven't. Come today to the table. And he will know, by no means cast out.
Don't spend the rest of the liturgy daydreaming. Spend the rest of the liturgy saying, here I am, God. Here's what I need you to help me with. And no matter what happens today, keep your head held high. Be full of joy. Don't be sad. Okay, I have problems. We all have problems. We all make mistakes. We all make sins. We all have pressure. You're not the only one who has pressure in life. We all have pressure. But when you receive life from Him, He'll help you carry that pressure. He'll give you strength from the inside. Don't leave the church today until you receive that. And please, forgive yourself. When you do that, the Shema of life, the Injera of life, the bread of life, will give us the resurrection in life. And God bless everyone in the church today. Let's pray for one another. And let's be restored by the message today. And be restored by the word of God. And be rest restored by the Holy Communion. And glory be to God forever. Amen. <laughs>